So in this video, I'm going to be doing a dual fan upgrade on my Neptune 2. This is a common upgrade for a lot of the more budget 3D printers, such as the Ender 3, which only comes with a single-sided cooling fan. I have found that there is a bit of a difference in part cooling from my Neptune 2 versus my Neptune 3, and that the Neptune 3 has better overhang capabilities and slightly better bridging. So with that being said, I went and scoured the internet for the very basic dual fan shroud. This is a common part available on Thingiverse. This is the beefed up version with the enhanced enforcement ribs for the screw provisions. Along with that, there is a little deflector for the cooling fan for the hot end, as well as a BL touch mount. Before I get started with that, I'm going to do a quick test on the fan capabilities of the original setup, and then after I get the dual fans put in, I will do the same test with the dual fans to see if there is that much of a difference. The fan setup that I'll be using for this modification are just two stock Elegoo 4010 blower fans. These were actually fans off of my Neptune 3 because I had some issues with fan wine and I contacted Elegoo and they sent me a new set of fans and I found out that the noise that I was getting was actually just PWM wine so I was able to tune that out by changing some settings in my firmware. So <laughs> thank you Elegoo for the modification parts for this video, unbeknownst to them. For those of you playing along at home, if you wanted to do this modification yourself and you didn't have the double fan setup, all you'd really have to do is simply get yourself a, another 4010 blower fan and just splice the wires together like you see here. Realistically, if I wanted to do this the kind of easier way, I could just splice in a single fan into the existing setup, but because I've already got the two fans, I'll have to fight with the cable braiding and add some new zip ties. So with that being said, I'm going to start my testing, then I will lay the machine on its side and start running wire. Don't try this at home, kids! So what I'm doing right now is I've got the hot end fan turned on and I'm just doing a test with a cup of water to see what the airflow looks like and I will replicate the same test when I add the additional fan and see how much more water displacement I get at this Z height. So this is just a red Solo cup filled up to the top with a little bit of water. And I have the Z distance 100 millimeters above my home position. So once I get everything back together, I keep it at the same Z height. And when I check the fan, it'll be a consistent comparison between the two setups. So to get started, disassemble the fan shroud assembly from the carriage. The original blower is hot glued in place, but once you remove the axial fan screws and get the fan out of the way, the blower kind of slides right out because the hot glue doesn't hold so well. From there, remove the BL touch bracket because that'll get in the way because the new shroud is wider. When assembling this, you have to make sure that everything kind of goes in as one piece. So you have to put the blowers onto the deflector and then when you put the blowers in, keep in mind that there's an arrow for where the vent comes out. And the ribs on the bottom of the deflector line up with the outputs on the blower. You also have to keep in mind that the wiring is a little bit tight, so you do have to do a little bit of trial and error to get everything to go in. Once you do get it to go in, the blowers kind of just bottom out in place. You'll see that the fans actually line up with the holes very well once you get it seated properly. And then from there, you can start putting in the screws for the axial fan. I ran into a situation where the screws are a little bit short, so they catch, but they don't really bite in very well. So I might have to get some longer screws for that. And then once that's all back together, it's just a matter of putting the 
fan shroud back in place so that it doesn't dangle around when we lay the machine over. Because once this is all assembled, we have to go in and cut all of the zip ties for the wire loom so we can run the actual fan wires down into the electrical enclosure. Once I'm finished with this, I'm going to swap over the BL touch to the new bracket. So I'll take that apart. And compared to the new bracket, all of the holes in Z level seem to be about the same. I did have to print out a spacer when I did my hot end upgrades, by the way. So I'll get that all put on there and then we'll flip the machine over. We have to trace the wire for the fan and it's the blue and yellow one that's right over here. Take a small needle nose plier and get the glue off of there. And then pop the wires out. From there, disconnect the zip ties that hold everything in place. And then once the screws are out, cut all of the zip ties and the electrical tape that holds the wire looms together. From there, just pull the wiring out for the fan. I ran into an issue where the JST connection got tangled up with some of the wires that were inside of the loom. So after trying to separate the wires, I kind of pulled a Charlie Murphy, Rick James and said, buy a new one, you rich mother. So I like to put a little wrap of tape around the end of my connector to prevent it from snagging on the inside of the braided line. And then from there, it's just a matter of fishing it through to the other side, take the tape off and plug it into the board. From there, we are ready to stand up and start testing. All right, so we're back upright and I didn't do any uh, cable management just yet. I wanna dial that all in before I zip tie it and send it home. I do have to set the X and Y offset of the BL touch, but ultimately because the bracket didn't change much and there wasn't that much of a difference in the clearance of the screw holes, I'm assuming that the Z height's gonna be roughly the same at least for testing purposes. So I'm just gonna home this out. And from here I could test the fans. All right, so the hot end fan turned on. Next I'll try the part fans. All right, so they seem to be working okay. Now that I homed out the Z, I can lift up my Z 100 millimeter, and we can set back up for the water test. So here's the water test with the second fan. Everything is at 100% right now. I'm going to put the video side by side to see if there is a noticeable difference, but it does seem like it's cratering out the center of the water a little bit more than it did with the single fan. And I'm not going to go back through and <laughs> set up the one fan again because I think this is going to be pretty much all I need for the time being. The water is a lot more turbulent than it was before. It does seem like the fans are doing a great job. The airflow does seem like it's a lot more focused with this shroud versus the factory shroud, which is good because you want the airflow on the extrusion point of the filament for rapid cooling rather than just blowing air around everywhere. So I'm going to chalk this up as a winner. I'm going to clean up the wiring and this will be it for now. If I wanted a different alternative, there are other fan shrouds available such as the Satsana, the Hero Me, the Voron Stealth Burner. There are quite a few shrouds available, uh, some that I don't remember and too many to list. So my takeaways from this upgrade are that it is a great upgrade for printers with a single fan. It's an inexpensive way to improve the cooling capabilities of your printer because a 4010 blower fan is only a couple of bucks. And if you already have a soldering kit and some heat shrink tubing, it's a pretty fast upgrade. Just make sure you print out the shroud prior to starting the upgrade or else you won't have a means to do so. There are a lot of available options on printables and thingiverse for pre-made solutions so you can pick and choose the shroud that you want that fits your application and if you feel adventurous and you want to go that extra level of customization you could even design your own
So that'll wrap it up for this one. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do on the channel, hit subscribe. And if you think that somebody else would benefit from one of these videos, share it with your friends because sharing is caring. If you have any ideas for upcoming videos, drop them in the comment section below. Check out my affiliate links in the video description for all of the tools and accessories that I use in all of my videos. And thank you to my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching and see you soon.